Tay Jones puts Eddie Hearn on full blast. Don't get mad. Let's explain. Push the weight in the flex, flex. The live is one in the six. Yeah. Hey, fit the runner boy, you nigga, no question. Yo. You ain't when a motherfucker high stepping. Yo. Hey, you never had a big enough weapon. Hey. Hey. Motherfucker hey. never learned your lesson. Right. Yeah. I'm an 88 pack nigga. Woo. Woo. I'm an 88 pack nigga. Uh, 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 I mean, they want to drink blood, things out. Full moon, motherfucker, change like a whole brother. I'm just a nigga from the hood trying to stack a little cheddar for the money. Drew Titan Bronze on deck. Shout out to the mighty LDBC. All right, this is this is this is a little bit to unpack. Um, so my brother Tay Jones did a live yesterday, and uh, I'm gonna put that link in the description. Now, you know, he, he was saying some things. Uh, um, he said a lot of things. I'm, I'm gonna put the link in the description. Y'all go watch it. He was on for a little over an hour, but he explains everything. Um, and with uh james khan aka eddie hearn because he's a con man i call him james khan you know he's not 007 he's triple zero in my opinion um whenever he says something you have to wonder what does he mean by it because you know this guy's a liar he's full of crap He's been beating us in the head with nonsense for over four years. Over four years. The guy's FOS, full of, you know, that stuff you defecate. You understand? Um, as you know, um, Eddie Hearn revealed that there was an offer uh that he, he, he said that he contacted uh shelly finkel obviously contacting shelly finkel was in reference to uh a potential fight against deontay wilder so he just put that out there right before Usyk versus aj now for people that think and people that use logic the first thing you ask is Okay, although I want to see that fight, why would he do that? And why is he saying that now? On fight week? On fight week? Why would he do that? But there's some people like, oh, he's trying to make the big fights. He's reaching out to Wilder. Wilder's going to duck again. No, 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 no. As if you guys weren't here for the first fiasco. I want you to understand. Understand where you are. You have to understand where you came from. We could have had Undisputed four years ago. When, De when Deontay was WBC champion and AJ had everything else. And what happened? Instead of making the fight, it was, hey, Deontay can't sell out Alabama. He don't sell no seats. What has he done? Never mind the fact he's a WBC champion. It was he's not marketable and no one knows him. And what do you get instead of that? Carlos Taco. Joseph Parker. Y'all never asked what Carlos Taco did. But y'all were cool with that. That's why when this man ran down, when, when Anthony was, was crying on the podium at the, or at the desk during the post fight, Eddie took the mic and ran down his whole resume starting from uh, Prince Charles Martin. And as he ran through those names, all I said was, okay, he could have fought Deontay there, he could have fought Deontay there. He could have fought King Kong he's right there. He could have fought Deontay there. He could have so many. Every last one of those names he ran off. I'm like, yo, he had other options. Sounds like he took the easy route. But see, what people don't realize is Eddie's a businessman. All of those events were great for his bottom line because two things happened. It lined his bank account. It kept AJ on the winning team. But most of all, it kept his jaw out of the line of fire of Deontay Wilder. But what he did was he celebrated those mediocre wins. And yes, I'm saying mediocre wins. Don't tell me those are solid wins when you had stiffer competition. Tell the truth, Eddie. You signed King Kong Ortiz when he was in line. 
he didn't get a shot, which is why he left. When AJ was in the WBC rankings, he was in line to fight Deontay. He jumped out the rankings. Coincidence? Did AJ, did he even know what the term freeze out means? Or did you tell him, just say you're going to freeze him out? I know that was you. You led that kid to a brick wall. And now look. Everything he did led up to Madison Square Garden. And although there was some a lot of nonsense going on there, if you follow me, you know what I'm talking about. The nonsense happened. And it was beyond your control. And it was at that point he lost respect. I don't care if he beat Andy in a rematch. Because you didn't anticipate Usyk. I didn't. I'm not even going to hold you. I didn't. So here we are. Right before the rematch. You reach out to Shelly Finkel? For what, dude? For you to play games? Why are you reaching out to Deontay when he don't have the goddamn belt anymore? If AJ wins, if he had beat Usyk, he's now unified again. Three time, three time, three time, right? Why are you reaching out to Deontay when you're supposed to be reaching out to uh, Tyson Fury? Never mind Tyson Fury's other stuff. But he, right now, as it stands, he hasn't been stripped. Suleiman hasn't, hasn't stripped him yet. So he's still the champion. Tyson Fury already said he reached out to you. And he said he'd fight you for free. No money on the line. Why wouldn't you reach out to him and say, okay, no money on the line, but you're going to put up that WBC strap? What's going on with you? Then you, he wants to fight Tesora in, in a trilogy? Was he going to do that for free? His mental state is all over the place. But why would you reach out to the guy with no belt? I thought Deontay Wilder don't sell. Yeah, I know, I know. Since three fights with Fury, things have changed. They may have changed. But why would you do that? If AJ won, why the hell would you reach out to Deontay, who's beltless? Huh? Why wouldn't you want to go for undisputed? You guys keep proving Deontay right. He said one face, one name. He was trying to make undisputed. You guys swore up and down you was trying to make undisputed, but you wanted to do it at a reasonable price. And no matter what Deontay accepted, it wasn't good enough. So now, guess what? You still don't want undisputed. You guys lied the whole time. You still don't want undisputed. You're chasing a bag. That's what you did with AJ. All you did was chase a bag. He had the name and he had the machine behind him. All you spoke about when you ran down his resume was seat sales. You can't tell me that Carlos Takam was a better sell than Deontay Wilder. And people don't pay attention. Why are you reaching out to Deontay Wilder? Let's be fair. Are you undermining Robert Hellenus? Robert could come in there and win this fight. I'm keeping it boxing, y'all. Deontay's my brother, but this is boxing. Everyone wants to know, how is he? How's his punch resistance? Is it the same? That's what makes this an intriguing fight. He's been in camp with Deontay. He knows him. So this is a 50-50 fight. Don't act like you don't know that. But why are you reaching out to him and not... If, 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 if you were so confident that Anthony Joshua was going to beat Usyk, why are you reaching out to Deontay Wilder and not Tyson Fury? I'll tell you why. Maybe, De maybe Eddie knows that Deontay's right when he said, hey man, he got other stuff going on. I don't know if he'll ever fight again. But there's something else, isn't there, Eddie? Right? Tay Jones said, you knew AJ wasn't going to win. So regardless, whether Deontay beats Robert Hellenist or not, Deontay could say, I'm fighting AJ again. I'm not again. I'm fighting AJ. And that'll sell. Two losses in a row. Well, three losses in a row, because it'll be Fury twice on paper and Robert Hellenist. And he'll still sell seats. That'll be three losses in a row against AJ's two. You saw dollar signs, didn't you? Oh, how the ties have turned. 
You knew AJ wasn't going to beat Usyk. You tried to secure a bag. That's what you tried to do. Now, to, to the AJ fans that are listening to this, I want you guys to think about something. Do you think this man, Eddie Hearn, is, is concerned about AJ's mental health, let alone his physical health? You lose the Usyk, you want to put him in the ring with Deontay Wilder? What? He signed a lifetime contract, a blood contract with Eddie Hearn. That's what he did. Eddie has to get a return on his investment. He said he wants to put this man in the ring in December. It is August right now. And, and you saw the meltdown. Here's a tweet right here. And I agree. They tried to lock me in for insurance because they knew he wasn't going to win. This is strictly a business, not a sport. There's a difference. There you go. Now watch this, y'all. Had AJ won and Shelly Finkel responded, hey, let's make a date. I firmly believe we'd be back to square one. This man done, he done messed off that fight for four years. Y'all remember all the games? I ain't got enough time in this video to review them. Do you think he'd have made it easy to do business? No. So what makes you think it'd be easy now? And take call them on it. I hope y'all thinking on y'all feet. He knew AJ wasn't going to win that fight. So he tried to secure a bag. This is a business move. See, a lot of that stuff went right over y'all head. A lot of y'all just said, oh, he reached out to Shelly. Let's see if Deontay ducks again. Nope. This man was trying to secure a bag. He knew AJ was going to lose that fight. So I'm going to ask y'all, where does AJ go from here? I watched a video. When, you know, Eddie was talking to another, uh, another YouTuber, I guess. And he made reference to... Uh, Derek Chisora, he said, look at Derek Chisora. He got like 12 losses. People still love him. But let me be very clear when I say this. The reason why they love Derek Chisora is not the same reason why they love Anthony Joshua. You see, Anthony Joshua was groomed. He had the red carpet rolled out for him. He was put on a pedestal. He had the Lennox Lewis crown on his head, and he hasn't done anything yet. And he had a machine, a media machine behind him. And unfortunately, he's not living up to those expectations because guess what? He's not that good. I told y'all a long time ago, if this was Lennox Lewis, he'd have fought Deontay three or four times by now. Lennox was about that life. And when Lennox, as a matter of fact, told AJ, yo, man, you got to fight this guy. Y'all turned on Lennox. Y'all said he was jealous of him? Lennox Lewis was jealous of Anthony Joshua? Y'all are crazy. That's what y'all did, though. Y'all are out of your mind. The love is different for Derek Chisora. I call Derek Chisora the black European Atoro Gatti. With Atoro Gatti, either he was going to win or he was going to lose. That's it. But either way, he was coming to fight. And people loved and respected him for that. Every time he went to Atlantic City, they came out in droves to support him. Canadian, Italian, whatever. They loved that man. And there was no reason to hate him. The blood and guts warrior, that's what they told him, right? That's Derek Chisora. That's the energy. He could take a loss. It's like, whatever. I'm a fighter. And he still got gas in the tank. That's not AJ. You know what you got with AJ? Audley Harrison 2.0. And it's no disrespect to no fight. I'm just keeping it a buck because y'all in the UK started calling him Fraudly Harrison. Didn't y'all? I didn't think of that. That was y'all. I wasn't even doing content when y'all did that. I read that on, a, on, on the, the, new, the internet somewhere. I said, oh man, they abandoned ship because he, he, he was an Olympian and they started putting him on a pedestal. They said, oh, we might have something here. And then he started losing. By the way, 
Deontay beat him. So that's a good job by my brother Tay Jones. The link will be in the description. Um, Y'all go watch the video. He talks about Eddie Hearn, amongst other things in the video, but he talks about Eddie Hearn and he broke it down. Eddie Hearn knew that the hell in this fight was, was on the rise. He knew that. Frank Warren knew that. That's why he said it about a month ago. Tay knew it, but he didn't leak it. And the public didn't find out until fairly recently. So y'all guys need to cut this crap out, man. Y'all are doing way too much. Don't put any faith in, in uh, uh, Eddie Hearn's words. He's been BSing y'all from, from day one. Lie after lie after lie after lie. I have video evidence. Written and in video. This guy needs to stop, man. It was a dick move on his part. And you got put on Front Street. I don't know when y'all gonna... Y'all need to learn, man. Grain of salt. And AJ fans. Because I know there ain't no more American ones. I can't find them anywhere. But AJ fans, think about it. You saw how AJ behaved after that fight? Was that normal? But he wants him in the ring in December. So now that we know it's not going to be Deontay, who's it going to be? Who do you want to see him fight next? Here's what I want to see him do next. Because at this point, he's an A, he's a, he's a a attraction, right? Now watch this. No light work for AJ. He just lost to one of the best in the game. No light work, right? Right. AJ, you about that life? You want that smoke? Here's what I need you to do. You tell Eddie Hearn, get me the winner of Ortiz and Ruiz. Ruiz will be a trilogy. Ortiz will be brand new. If you got the courage. Y'all let me know what y'all think. And salute to Tay. Bronx on deck. Move!